on the eyebrows are different, but this, this pattern on the cheek and on the side of the face is exactly the same for almost every short-legged terrier, just like the body. Um, obviously not the Westie, because the Westie gets a full head. But if they get an actual beard pattern, it's almost always exactly the same. If you get it nice and close to this eye, right down to the corner of the jaw, that is very typical for short-legged terriers. But and this I one's a goatee? Huh? Is this what the Scotty's a goatee? Um, it, yeah, it's it, it. I usually only take them back to the corner of the mouth and not all the way up. Like you would a wire fox, right? Oh. Yeah, they get they get more of a full beard. But this like pattern from here to here is exactly the same. Um, the change in the wire fox is they get theirs trimmed all the way up to the crease in the lip flu, which is up here, and they just get a little goatee in the front where the Scotty gets a full beard. And I like a tan in reverse on the cheeks. And I just go straight up to the where the corner of the eye would meet the ear. And stop there, because you want to blend that into the head. And you want to come nice and close to the corner of the eye once you get the hair out of the way. And then the neck pattern is a V shape, just like your poodle or anything else. Come all the way around the front here. And start your V right here, and just go like that. Don't try to scoop it out, because you'll make it too wide. And also instead of going downwards. Yep, if, oh. you, if you find the corner, just go like that. And don't go all the way up, just make your little pattern. Good, good and then tip. You can fix it later. So it's against the grain instead of I always do always against the grain and they get they get used to it. I have very few that get irritated from it and if they do I just pick up a seven instead. But you want to get nice and as close to the corner of that eye without taking the actual corner out as you can. And then this will get blended with thinning shears. That's why you see this little bit of shoulder stuff here. That gets blended in with thinning shears. A marker for where you started that that neck um it's usually right above the adam's apple just like you do with a poodle um and that's that's a good place to kind of start and then if they don't have enough neck and you want to create some more neck just like with the poodle you're going to lower it down a little bit more and kind of create that illusion that they have a lot more neck and that's pretty typical in these short-legged terriers. A lot of them don't have a lot of neck, and they're a little straight in front. it'll be a lot easier so we're going to do close-up stuff here just come on up and what that does is it makes your head look too wide this erica do you remember what this is for what the tuft is for protecting something when they go in the mm -hmm. it's to keep dirt and stuff out of their ears when they go to ground when they go to ground so they go to ground which means they're digging up rodents and all kinds of stuff in holes so part of the reason for the eyebrows and the tufts in front of the ears is to try to protect the ear. You can, from, yeah. but it's so, incorrect. Right. It, no, it's it, it's definitely you know um, something that you could do, but I wouldn't leave a whole lot. I would just not trim the ear as short. Like I'm going to use a 15 on the back of his ear. If he really had like you know huge giant ears or what, or I was trying to make them look closer together in the center or change it, yes, you can use hair to do that. He's got actually pretty good ears, but I've seen them with like radar ears, like, <laughs> so who knows what we do with that sometimes, but make them shorter. So again, if you want to come and, and touch him, you can feel where the ear kind of folds right there. You want to shave behind that so that you leave the tuft in the front. Oh, that, that's laugh yep. there. Mm -hmm. oh. 
that's kind of the best way to do it. And then if their ears are really, really wide set apart, you can leave more hair in here and, and blend it and make it look like their ears are closer together, like if they're too far out on the side. And then I just find that little crease and I go right up next to it like that. Like so. And then all of this other stuff can get blended in with the top of his head. So find the little crease and just shave the whole back of the ear first and always go out to the edge. If you're an inexperienced groomer, the best thing for you to always do is, is aim your clipper out to the edge so you don't... George, I know people are looking at you. Go out to the edge like that so you know you're not going to catch it. And always hold the ear with your other hand and your other fingers nice and tight. Don't pinch it, but you're holding it nice and firm so the dog gets more comfortable. First time I did his ears, I had to take thinning shears to him because he was like all over the place freaking out. And then he's got really nice ears, so I do a 30 blade on the inside because they're nice and erect. And I want to make sure that we accent that. And he's still a little fussy about getting the front side of his ear done. I think a lot of these terriers that have the erect ears, um, they hear a lot better. And so they're, if you'll notice when you're grooming them, they get, they're a lot more sensitive to like noises and things around their heads. And that's why. It's not just because they're being butts. It's because, listen to how loud that is to you. Even though this is one of the quietest clippers on the market, they still hear what, 10, 20, 30 times better than we do. So that's right in their ear and their puppy. You notice that the ears are cropped. They are even more sensitive or not necessarily? I don't think so. I don't think that makes any difference. I actually think cropping the ears may actually inhibit it because there's not, okay, so for example, on how. Yeah. The like other that thing is, is, is um, I don't know what dryers you guys have, but make sure that you maybe possibly replace the hoses. The hoses can be a lot more flexible so you're not putting as much on your wrist. Uh -huh. um, the other thing is, is the same thing when I teach people the scissor. Don't do this. Yeah. Do this. And, have and switch you back and forth between comforts. your hands. Learn to be more I, I, ambidextrous. I do that, yeah. Yeah, okay. learn to it's be more thing. ambidextrous and you know, don't try not to dry all day long with the same hand. Uh -huh. It's yeah. hard to see in this picture, but it's called a comfort sleeve. It's supposed to go over the dryer hose and okay. make it yeah. comfortable. You know, you know, Worth a try. Give it a try. I yeah. was that going to ask if that yeah. might help. It's yeah. just like a fabric that covers yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it. it's worth Softer. a shot, but mm -hmm. again, like, don't, you know, try not to do this number. Yeah. Try so to wave your whole arm. Somewhere like this. You know. Yep. Okay, not yep. that. Yeah, because that's that. your instinct. Okay. Yep. Because it's not the heat of the dryer, because that sleeve is also supposed to protect from that. That's not the Usually the heat is actually yeah. good for your joints, oh. so I would assume yeah. that that doesn't have anything to do with it for most people. Oh. Um, However, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a consideration mm -hmm. if you have really sensitive skin. You know, I, I got a new Sharp Owl dryer and it gets hot. And my other my hand and D shed. This is an Andis rake because um, I'm not stripping him and I'm not worried about breaking the coat off. But I want the clipper work to look really nice, so I'm going to take all of this dead stuff out before I go over it with the clipper. And always try to hold in front of where you're working so you don't grab their skin. And this is where his harness goes. So you'll see that it flips up and I get a lot more hair out of there. That's because the harness sits there and rubs and breaks the coat and causes softer hair. You can see the difference in the color and you can also see the difference in the texture between here and here. So that's what you're doing when you clip or two is you're, you're making the coat softer. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. It's growing in a different direction. Yep. That his it's harness upwards, sits right yeah. there. Yep. So um, you can make it lay down a little bit, but when they have a harness or a collar that they wear all the time, there's really not a whole lot you can do about it other than just try to keep the, the healthy, coarser hair coming in. And the first few times I did this, he screamed bloody murder. He thought I was killing him. And this is all I was doing, just puppy stuff. And now he doesn't care. 
So pretty much most of your clipper interiors, you'll do this. Yes. Before, yeah. even like pet trims? Mm -hmm. just a pet yep. trim? Before just and just after the clipper work? Um, I usually just do it before. Um, if I can get away with it, depending on the dog, I usually just do it before because it gets out all that. That undercoat fluff is what causes your clipper marks. How much, how long would it normally take you to groom him start to finish? Um, I do him and his brother uh, both haircuts in an hour and 45 minutes. Including the bath? Yep. Yeah. Bath, blow dry, and everything. Yep. So under an hour for each dog. Yep. That's about right for a small dog. But for a new groomer, it might take a little over an oh, hour. Oh, yeah. That seems oh, yeah. like such a short my amount first, of time. My first standard poodle took me four and a half hours. Okay. It's normal. It's normal. You're okay. You're good. No worries. As your confidence goes up, as your handling skills go up, um, but these um, carriers, you know, they have a bigger foot. And I think as long as they're not touching the ground, then they're fine. Um, let's see. It's not a nub. Gotcha. But it's short enough because they have a big fat pad for digging. It's short enough when you set it on the That dog is overstimulated, yeah. and all you're doing is stimulating them more. Yeah. Right. So, like, even when he was nervous before, we did a couple little, oh, good boy, and I patted him, and then I just started to ignore him because right. I realized I was feeding whatever anxiety he was yeah. having, yeah. and now it's gone. Yeah. The more you feed into it, the more, the more it's going to happen. Okay. So, this pattern... Um, this is this is a four comb, which is basically the equivalent of a five, in my opinion. We're going to take this down the side of his neck and into his what we call the shoulder layback. The shoulder layback is these bones right here, that and that. The reason we're doing that is because we want this to be a little bit shorter than his body, the side of his neck, and down into the shoulder, because that's going to create longer neck and it's also gonna make his body look a little more compact. And he's like, you don't, what are you doing? Like, you don't usually use that one. So just right down the side of the neck and into the shoulder way back. Basically like a small triangle V shape right there. And then across. Don't go all the way across the front until you get in front of the dog and look because they short-legged terriers get a keel. They don't get this stuff taken off. Long legged dog terriers. Like pet dog, but you still the same pattern your pet as if you were yep. simulating. The same pattern, shows, just not hand stripped and then based on whatever the customer wants. If they want a seven all over and no legs and no mouth, okay, I don't care. But then you still know. make the head as, most, still, as close to yep. breed profile as you can. Yep, if they don't like the eyebrows, make the eyebrows shorter, you know. But it's the same basic idea for, for everything. Okay, and then as far as the heel goes, if you, I've taught this multiple times, if you take your fingers like this, two fingers like that, Run it down the front of the dog till it falls in the hole. Hmm. That's what you want. Yeah, Everything yeah. else goes. Yep. Uh. Your fingers will fit right in there. You just run them right down until they fall in the hole. That's what you want to keep, and, and the rest of that goes same off. Same for Westy. Yep. Mm. Same thing. Westy, Sealy Ham, all of those. No. Yeah, And then if you have, now these guys are supposed to be long in body, but if you have a Scotty that's really like a freight train, um, you can tighten their body up by also taking this shorter that you use into the shoulder layback and you can trim here and make them look shorter. Yeah.